Hello. Hello, 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 Booze. How's it going? How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? We've got something quite... I'm doing very well. We've got something very special to show people, right? Very special. An incredible series. An incredible, like, uh, concept. People who were watching me about a year ago might remember I did some competitions based around something. But considering the next expansion is coming, hopefully... We, we, we have a bit of an argument about this, right? Like, you think... When do you think that it would be a good time for the next expansion? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, very soon. While I kind of think, let's let's leave it for ages and ages and ages. <laughs> um, no, I really, I don't know. I'm coming around on that opinion now at the moment, but I do still see the virtue in if the expansion takes ages to come out. But what will be arriving with the expansion boots? New elite specializations. Oh, you know, I'd never thought about that, but you're totally right. They might do new elite specializations. <laughs> And so, uh, we we want. I, 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 my impression here is you've got an idea for an elite specialization you just desperately want to tell me, and we've kind of molded it into a thing where we're going to share a, a, a potential elite spec with one another. Yeah? That's right. Well, yes, that's right. Exactly. And you guys in chat are going to. If you go down to the comments right now, you will see that you can vote for either me or Boots. And we're going to see who has the better elite specialization by the end of this. <laughs> and we'll see, like, who beat. So vote with your thumbs, vote up either me or Boots. And vote with we'll your see. brains, too, not with your hearts. We all know yes. that you like WP, but, but you know, if, if my lead specialization is better than him, vote for me because... Or... Go on, go on. Well, I was going to say, he's, he's not going to give you gold or anything for voting for him. He's oh, not gonna... are you bribing people? Is that what's happening? You're going to bribe people for this? this yeah. I will, I will... <laughs> oh, no. I will personally shout out... To every single person next episode. What is uh, this? No, you won't. Oh, no, you fine. won't. I won't. It I will won't. just be 20 <laughs> minutes of us just reading <laughs> usernames on YouTube. <laughs> I could do that. I could do that. Just be but so also, guys, as well, after we're done with this, if you've got an idea for a theme of an elite spec you want to see as well, we're open to like what your ideas are. But so today we're starting out with Mesmer, right? That's right. Mesmer. Okay, so you've got a kick-ass Mesmer idea. Basically, mm -hmm. Boots came to me and said, look, WP, make a Mesmer elite spec. And we're just going to spitball and we're going to go through it. So we'll do this like uh, round robin almost, I guess, between the two of us. So yeah. first you can talk a little bit about what your idea is. And then I'll talk a little bit about what my idea is. And guys, we've got something very fancy here. Check it out. Mm -hmm. Ooh, ooh, we have whiteboards. Okay. And so, Boots, if you want to type to be, show people. That's supposed, oh, to be a, that's supposed to be a heart, but it looks kind of like, <laughs> I don't know what. <laughs> It looks like a love disc, right? Which is pretty heart-like. That's good. Yeah. That's good. That's good. So Boots is is he's got a tablet running, and he's gonna jot down our ideas on the whiteboard as we go, so that you guys can see what you know our our cumulative ideas are as we go forwards. So that should be pretty cool. He might also draw like questionable. Is that a light bulb? Is it's that? light bulb. It's ideas. Ah, that's very nice. Okay, cool. So do you want to start first by telling us the name of your Mesmer Elite Specialization? Oh, okay. Well, that, I mean, yes, yes. I have t two ideas. One, because, okay, sorry. The name of my, <laughs> God. Go ahead, you can get some composure. It's okay. In the meantime, I'm going to be doing map completion on my Mesmer and just squeezing a little bit of game time while we play. Okay. Um, so, yeah. So, the name of my elite spec is the Mirror Mancer. The what? Mirror Mancer. Like, type mi it? Mirror. Mirror. Mirror Mancer. The How do you Mirror pronounce? Monster. No. Mirror Mancer. What? Yeah. Or oh, okay. or just or just Mirror Mage. Why are you saying it so weirdly though? M mirror Mancer. Why are you saying it like that? <laughs> that sounds awful. No, just Mirror Mancer. Mirror Mancer's okay. I like that. Or Mirror Mage because we already have a Chrono Mancer, so you know. Oh no. Oh, so you think they shouldn't all be Mancers? Yeah, I feel like they should not be Mancer. Because there's also I Necromancer. Mirror Mage. There we and go. And Element. Uh, oh, Elemancer? <laughs> <laughs> Elementalist. Elementalist. Yeah, okay. All right, fair enough. I Mirror like Mancers, Mage. though. Mirror Mage. Okay, so that's that's just to whet your appetite. That's my that's my the All name right, of I'm my... I'm curious. I'm okay. curious about... Well, what I'm not going to tell you more about it right now. Now you have to tell me the name of your... Ah, uh, okay. Spec. All right. All right. So my elite specialization name, okay? Mm -hmm. It's really lame, and I don't want people to think of Luxwana Troy when I say this, okay? But uh -huh. the empath, all right? It's just empath. That's it. Empath. Very simple. Two syllables, the empath, all right? Because basically, you... you if we're making a Mesmer Elite spec, I, I've got to look back at GW1 Mesmer stuff and I've got to wonder what I loved about GW1 Mesmer and bring some of those old things forward. So, oh, why have you typed it like that? No, not empath like that. Because, you know, like, Mesmer. All right, fine. 
I think that if they released an elite <laughs> specialization that was called Empath like that, I think they would have beaten Dragon Hunter in terms of like most hated name. Possibly. Can you imagine that? M dash path? <laughs> oh, that would be so horrible. People would hate it so bad. All right, I'll try to get it back to. Man, the, the problem is uh, it's hard with this thing because. To like undo. Undo yeah. without uh, erasing the board. Okay. Without erasing our whiteboard. All right, yeah, so the M path, all right? And bear with me, it's going to be a cool spec. All right, so do you want to talk a little bit more about the Mirror Mage then? We, we'll go top down, right? So, oh, yeah. so g tell me the flavor of the Mirror Mage, I guess. Like, give me a short description of, of what it is. Okay, or... I, wrote, I wrote down a short description even. Like, really? Like, yeah. Oh, you've done yeah. more work than I have then. Okay, check you've this done out. Work. You ready? The Mirror Mage has perfected the illusion magics tied to replication and light manipulation. They are okay. able to focus their energies to form a single powerful doppelganger illusion to attack and confuse the enemy in unison oh. with the Mesmer. No, the, it's a pet class. The Mirror Mancer is also quite skilled at bending and reflecting light. Okay, all right. Okay, so unfortunately, I'm not is... going to write that all down, because... That's fair enough. I like that, though. So this is essentially like a Phantasm kind of Phantasm Plus, like taking the honing in on the idea of Phantasms and ex yes. expanding Actually, that Actually, I might it. be able to write that down. Hold on a second. For me, okay, my empath... Oh, you tried. I, I, saw, tried. I saw it flick up there for a second. <laughs> for me, the empath, okay, the, the idea of the empath is it's a mesmer who has really honed in on the, the aspects of mental manipulation, but within the realm and the territory of emotions, okay? So... The, the 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 empath doesn't really you know try and trick people out and manipulate them through like very overt means but it taps into like their emotional state and it it, it affects them through that right so it will make them feel guilty it will make them feel sad it will make them feel unnecessarily happy or or it will make them feel great shame or whatever it will make them panic it will get into their psyche right so it's everything about that like the idea of an empath like you might think is just about reading someone else's emotions, but this is purely about manipulating people's emotions. And it's because that, that was a huge part of GW1 Mesmer. So many of their skill names and things, like, were so cool. And uh, we just sort of don't get enough of that in GW2. So, uh, so yeah, that's what that's what I'm honing in on, right? We're, we're like the mentalist kind of thing. Okay. That's what we're going for. All right, so I made these pictures for us. That'll. Uh... Oh, these are lovely. I like yeah. it. I like it a lot. Okay. okay. So do you actually have... A uh, a picture to use for I do yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna copy paste a, a picture in for you all right oh oh my yeah see you see that oh, it's flashy it's... yeah all credit to Google what's your image Let's mine see. mine is also a Google image but also it people will recognize it if they're nerds um, and okay. uh, and I just did a little uh, a little a little color shift here all right oh you color shifted. Oh, okay. So, so I actually know what this is. This is MTG, right? It is MTG Vesuvian Doppelganger. And you've swapped the color on it. That's cool. When yeah. we did our competitions uh, ages back, some people made like skill tooltips and like stole cards and things from other games and then shifted them. That's badass, dude. That looks really cool. I know. It looks amazing. It looks I like amazing. it because it's it's very Lissa-ish, right? It's very Lissa on is theme. the patron goddess. Yeah, it is. It's really good. So far, I think you're winning. I know. On, on of that. course, of course, I'm winning. Jeez. Oh no! Look, I'm hoping my humility here and my <laughs> my courage in the face of being beaten will score me some popularity votes. And Pop you mean pity I'll... votes? Pity votes, popularity votes. Who am I to judge? I All right. Know. All right. Okay. So next, we have the weapon. Every elite spec, as far as we know, will get a weapon, right? Okay. And so what is the weapon that your elite spec is going to get? Okay, all right. So I I wanted something really castery, okay? I wanted my guy I wanted to be very much on the idea of um, you know, this is this is someone manipulating magic. And no matter where I went, I just didn't like the idea of a lot of the other Guild Wars 2 weapons. Now you could in theory double up um, like the la the, like the Chrono got shield and you could in theory give this thing shield as well. The system like, allows for that. It would just be a bit of a missed opportunity. So what I went with was, I, I, I boiled it down to either a scepter offhand or a focus main hand. And mm. I liked the idea of someone, uh, of doing the focus because it was a couple more skills and it, I think it, it's got more opportunity to be build defining. So, because, you know, they're, Focus they're not, main hand? Yeah, focus main hand. So that's what I've gone with, focus main Oh my main god. Hand. So like, you have a book in your hand. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the idea is that, and you could totally do that because there are book foci in the game. But I didn't want it to be like, I'm not talking, like, when people talk about focus main hand, usually it's with like a warrior elite specialization that could use a knuckle duster and punch people and stuff. That's not what I'm going for. I, I want yeah. this to just be someone who's really channeling this thing for the purposes of, of magic, right? Yeah, so, like a warrior with, with like a skull in his head, hand. Yeah, and just punches and just people smashing with. it in people's faces. And that's yeah. kind of cool as well. Like, if we ever do a warrior, if people want to see a warrior one, we could talk about that at some point. And, like, <laughs> you could be a warrior that hits people with books. <laughs> It'd be cool. It'd I want to really do that. I do want that. That's, that, that was or with bottles and things, right? Because there's bottles. Bottle I got, foci. I got to be honest be? with you, that was one of my elite spec ideas <laughs> in the past. Oh, really? Yeah. Really, really, really. Yeah. That's so uncreative of you, Boots. Oh, boo. What's Ooh. a ship in a bottle called in game? I'm trying to show people it on the TP at the moment. Ship in a bottle? No, ship doesn't appear. Uh, well, whatever. You guys know about it. You guys know this thing. All right, what's your what's your uh, your weapon of choice? Well, okay. So I wanted to sort of go on theme, but I also wanted to give something to the mesmer that it needs. So like, if I wanted to go crazy on theme, I would go sh shield main hand because oh, the shield would like create an, a mirror. But okay. but no, no, I think that's a terrible idea. So uh, I went instead with something that would benefit a Mesmer a lot, which is a pistol main hand. Pistol main hand, okay. Did, but, aren't you scared that that's kind of like meant to be more gunslingery? Well, yes, but how, like, I mean, a little bit. But I, the way I figured it is that the pistol will shoot light bullets. Oh, God. Okay. You, you would concentrate light, light into the gun and shoot out. Bzew, bzew. Light, light <laughs> I bullets. like the I like the little visual effect that went along with the sound effect there. That's good. Um, okay, light bullets. Yeah. You're making yours look a lot flashier than mine. I don't know what you're talking about. Here. You got all these you got all these effects going on with the light bullets. Uh, I don't know. Focus. Here's a focus. Uh, <laughs> to be to be honest, mine's quite vague though. Ship, so in, ship in a bottle. There you go. All right. Okay. So pistol main hand. Is there anything you want to say specifically about how that weapon might work? Uh, right. So yeah, I have like you know you could have like shattering shot to go with the mirror theme, like your your bullet shatter mirrors or shatter things mm. uh focusing shot to focus the light focus shots uh maybe a reflecting bullet in some way uh or maybe mm. um illusion bullets okay yeah like some of the bullets i think they should damage. fire not not light bullets but like little fragments of glass or something like yeah that. that'd be that'd be very good too yeah wow. yeah, yeah 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 blender bus so, kind of style so in terms of gameplay, my the focus, I like I have a very specific like idea for it. And the first comparison I'm going to make, people won't like the sound of, right? But just get over it for a second. Okay. I I like the idea of this weapon, the, the, or the role of this elite specialization of being kind of the the magical equivalent of like a sniping kind of playstyle. So I don't with when I focus? say sniper though, I don't mean I don't I don't mean with respect to burst damage. What I mean for my elite spec is it's like a very long range character that would be quite squishy and flighty. But also as a long range character is very like focused in its target. So my guy wouldn't be much of an AoE, -er. it would be like Picking someone out from a long distance and manipulating them from that distance, like so. That's what the focus, the focus abilities would be kind of like. Like they'd be like, uh, you know, a bit like Scepter Three currently is for the Mesmer, but much longer range. And I like the idea of an ability that summons lots of clones, and maybe you can swap around them or something to try and keep that gap. Mm. Um, but that that that's that's what that is basically. Okay. Um, so, yeah. and as a main hand, it would probably have a clone on there because Mesmer main hands tend to have clones in the first two skills. Long cool. range. Yeah, that's good. That's good. That's exactly right. Yeah, well done. All right, good. Okay, so next, um, why don't you talk to me a little bit then about the core mechanic of your class? Okay, well, this is where um, it gets because interesting. Because that's, that's the other big thing, right? This is that's where it gets way. really interesting. Okay. Oh, I'm sure. So, so it's got to be something good enough to replace the Chronomancer, right? And no. No, this is, no, no. Or interest. Not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Otherwise, everybody's gonna keep on playing Chronomancer. So, or no, but then what, what about Chrono? They both should exist in harmony. Right? No, no, no. So it's not gonna replace the role of a Chronomancer oh, in okay. any way, shape, or form. It's just gonna be able to <laughs> be. It's gonna be something that'll be so interesting that people will want to play it instead of Chronomancer. Sometimes. I'm just, I'm just scared that you're about to talk about why this thing has like tons of alacrity or something. No, 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 no. Okay, all um, right, all right, all right. Let's not get into that. That's a huge discussion anyway. Yeah. So, so the F5 ability is no more, right? There's no more... Uh, continuum split. Continuum split. But you get a new F5 ability. Ah. Uh -huh. You've gone a different route to me then here. And it's only usable when you uh, have three 
phantasms summoned out. Okay. So when you have three oh, phantasms out... Oh, I like it. Out, That's very cool. Okay. When you have three phantasms out, not illusions, phantasms, mm. you could press F5, and all three phantasms go away, and instead, one doppelganger... Does the, um, the doppelganger illusion count as one of your three active summons? So, so it counts as three illusions for the purpose of shatters. Oh, okay, all right. Okay. It counts as three illusions for the purpose of shatters. Uh, it counts as a phantasm for traits yeah. and stuff like that. Um, it uh, When you press F5 to shatter the other three phantasms to summon this, you uh, ground target to, put, to summon where it's supposed to be. Okay. And uh, so it's going to be stronger than a regular phantasm, a little bit less strong than you. I'm saying, I'm thinking, uh, okay. but it looks exactly like you, and uh, it will be using your skills simultaneously with uh, how you use okay. them. Yeah. So like, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking this is the way to do it too. When you move around, it moves around the same way. Okay. Well, how do they code that though? This sounds like the kind of thing that in an idealistic world would work beautifully, but practically speaking, would just crumble. Yeah, it's possible that you need some sort of AI uh, with it. So like instead of it moving at the same time as you do, um, it would move just the way like a normal uh, phantasm would move. Uh, maybe like stand in place or walk towards your enemy when it's fighting with a sword, etc, etc. But yeah. it still uses the same weapon skills you do. Like it'll okay, when yeah, you yeah. auto attack, it auto attacks. When you and it cast, can dodge and it can do player things. Exactly. So can, when you dodge, use... it dodges, etc. Yeah. Okay. So, All right. That's cool. So it's super, super um, uh, difficult to tell which one's the right one. And See, well, how do you feel? I don't want to get into. Well, I've got, and on top of on that, forever. sorry. On top of that, though, the F five skill while you have your doppelganger active then becomes a, on like, I don't know, a 20 second, 15 second cooldown, a mm. swap. Oh, and you can inhabit. You So people won't know which one you're controlling. Exactly, so any uh, uh, every 15 seconds, you're allowed to swap positions with your doppelganger. Wait, every 15 seconds? How long, how persistent is this thing? It's until you shatter it, or until it dies. But killing it is just as hard as killing you. No, it's not as strong as you. Oh, okay, all right, I see. Yeah, but not quite, like, still stronger than a phantasm. Right, okay. Yeah. All right, so that makes sense, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, it, the, for me, it opens up so many possibilities of, like, being able to uh, strategize, uh, trying to duke make... Duke people, duke, trick people. Duke, yeah. yeah, trick people. It's, it's, it's difficult to see. It's difficult to figure out just in my I brain think I, 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 I like the idea, I just genuinely don't think it would work from uh, this would be what would be cool about this is in pvp but i don't think it would work with latency and stuff like you move and then the server has to figure out when you've moved and then it has to, like and then it's gonna be like the thing would always be lagging behind you it would but never why? be like that perfect but why would, why why wouldn't because you, when you move on your client your client has to send that information to the server which then can tell the phantasm to move and duplicate what you're doing so hmm. there's always going to be that that delay there based on the player's ping, and it's always going to be lagging a little bit, and it's always it's going to. I think it would just be kind of icky. There's no way to make the phantasm server based. I mean, client based. Not unless you want people hacking the crap out of it. And <laughs> the out of it. Fair enough. Fair so, enough. So I don't know. I don't know. Idealistic. It's very cool. It's very cool. Well, so f should we should we look at the empaths uh, core sure, mechanic? Sure, no? sure, 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 sure. So. So you, you've gone with what Arena Net did last expansion, and you've said um, that you're adding a fifth shatter. I'm not doing that, all right? I'm breaking a card. Well, it's not really a shatter. We sure, but I'm breaking it. You're, you're adding an extra capability. I'm breaking a, a big rule that they've never really done with Guild Wars 2, so this immediately makes my one kind of like totally unrealistic. But in a lot of places with the design of mine, I've, I, I kind of hate that in Guild Wars 2, they never add like a perk with a drawback bundled into traits. Like, they never do it anymore. Like, there's nothing that's like half your max health but life leech on everything, right? Mm. They never do that because they never give you a downside on that. Well, I'm kind of doing that here. So, basically what I'm doing is when you take this elite specialization, you lose all of your main shatters. You lose all of them. Okay. But they're replaced and you get new ones. You get new shatters. And for the purposes oh, of all the traits so and all so the tools. So you're doing like the dragon hunter. 
Yes, yes, a lot like the Dragon Hunter, okay, but the, so it, uh, other areas I genuinely do take stuff away in. And, and we'll see, right? But so basically, we, we're not getting five shatters, but we have four different ones now. Okay. Okay. Uh, and so the two, three, and four do this, right? Shatter two will apply torment. And current shatters already do this through traits and stuff, but this is like baseline. This is what it does, two right? Torment. The shatter two will apply torment. Instead the three, of confusion. The three now applies confusion. I mean, you could swap to make it, you know, more readable to people. Um, the uh, the three applies confusion and the four applies torment and confusion together. Okay, but then the shatter one is something I'm calling wastrel's worry. Okay, and we might we may have to rejigger a couple of things in Guild of Sea to get this. All right, but so basically this is an elite specialization that is built around one of my favorite interactions of being a mesmer in Guild Wars One, and that is putting hexes on someone that punishes them for doing things and then topping them off with another hex that tells them that they have to do something. So Guild Wars mm -hmm. 1 players will understand this very clearly. Uh, for the Guild Wars 2 people, essentially it's like, I put confusion on you so you don't want to cast skills because otherwise you'll take extra confusion damage, okay? But I then also put like my F1, which is fairly spammable. I, if I land my F1 on you, it says you have to use a skill in the next three seconds, otherwise you're gonna take a massive packet of damage. So while you're fighting the empath, he's constantly making you question what's the right action to do here. It, mm -hmm. Should I be using my ability or should I be waiting to pass it off, but then I'm gonna take the wastrel's worry tick. And it's, so it's like forcing like this extra layer of thinking onto people at every second through their fights by having to juggle all the time whether they should be standing still or whether they should be running around or whether they should be using skills or not because of you know the, the, the cost benefit analysis that you're constantly having to rejigger through your head as you do. That's what I want to hone in on. It's such a cool part of what it meant to be a Mesmer and it's so fun in GW1 that we just kind of missed in Guild Wars 2 because of the way that they handled stuff. And so like the classic thing in Guild Wars 1 is there was a skill called empathy which meant the target takes damage whenever it attacks and yeah. that's not really so a thing in guild that's Wars confusion too. but it's confusion and retail a bit right like so that that's where the inspiration for the empath empathy comes uh, from uh, right uh. so it's all that juicy old stuff visions of regret and backfire and stuff like that so you kind of juggle your shatters and like deciding when you, you when you're putting wastrel's worry on people and so so wait how do you put on wastrel's worry it's your F1, so it's a shatter. Oh, one is Rachel's worry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that, that's like your main, like, your other stuff will revolve around that. And it's going to so put one stack of Wastrel's worry? How does it work exactly? Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's a debuff that goes on someone. Three. Two, it's a lot like Pulmonary Impact, right? Oh, boy. It's a lot like that, but you cannot take the Wastrel's worry damage as long as you use a skill in the time before it ticks. But okay. do you want to use that skill because you may have a lot? And I, more, more I'll explain when we get into traits in a second. I like the idea of Wastrel's Worry. I like, uh, I like, like... I prefer what Dragon Hunter did with its F abilities to what Chronomancer did with its. I think that the Dragon Hunter feels more impactfully different moment to moment. Because oh, of their replacement. Because of their replacement strategy rather than just putting the continuum split. Now, there's other aspects of the de of design of the classes we could go into, but you, you know, we'll, we'll get bogged down. Okay, so... Uh, oh, oh my god. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so, those are our core mechanics. Uh, our next thing is... Next thing is... A minor trait, to mi talk about our minor traits. Oh, is it a minor trait? Yeah, well, if, let's do a minor trait first. I thought, so, I thought, what's an example of a passive? I thought we tossed part? that. Okay, well, I'll have to come up with something quick. You go first. So, I was thinking as a, as a, as a, a principal... Torment and Confusion have interesting ideas for the, the empath playstyle or whatever, but they're not that they're not what I really want them to be in Guild Wars 2. So what I would like instead is a minor trait that improves the potency of the on you know the the the, the actual on on tick parts of confusion but gets rid of or lessens the effect of the passive. So when you take this elite specialization, confusion is functioning like fundamentally differently here for you. Instead of just rolling ticks out, right? Mm. Continuously rolling ticks out and then the on on proc activation isn't that powerful. You shift the balance. So like the background, like ambient damage goes way down or maybe even away completely. Again, you find the numbers, but the on activation aspect of that confusion, that's the bit that's really brutal, right? So that you can like really hone in into to what that part of the empath's play style is. And the same for torment as well, right? So like when you're against an empath, if an empath tormented the hell out of you, 
you, you, there's a real counterplay in your mind going on. Like, it really hurts to move, but you're totally safe if you're not moving. But then that's where Westeros Warrior would, like, start inter interfe interfacing with that, right? And the same with, with Confusion. So that's, like, some nice ideas for miners, I think. Like, you would just take that as a baseline, a baseline established part of what this elite specialization is, right? Okay, all right. Um, then... So those would be my miners. All right, okay. So I would say then for Mirror Mage, um, or Mirror Mancer, if you will, Mirror Mage, mm -hmm. Uh, you want to play into buffing your doppelganger some more. So maybe it, uh, uh, or maybe, hmm, I don't know, either, uh, either buffing your doppelganger some more, but that's kind of interesting because if it's just part of the base class anyway, you could just say your doppelganger, like you, you would, yeah, you but that's not what arena net did with Temp. I, I, I know what you're saying and that annoyed me. Like Tempest arena net did that, right? They were yeah. like, Oh, here's overloads, and what do our other what do our miners do? Uh, they make your overloads do swiftness, <laughs> prop basically. Yeah. I mean, you also get stronger prop, but yeah. I would like, say uh, I would I say know. no. I would say that's a bad idea. Instead, instead, uh, go more along the line of Beastmaster root root or uh, nature magic, I think it was, and uh, boons applied to you are shared with your doppelganger. Oh yeah, okay. Because the other thing with miners is like how fun it feels, the progression aspect of acquiring the elite specialization in the first place, you know? Yeah. And so that's like, oh yeah, I'm looking forward to getting this miner, it will help. Yeah, yeah I see and, what you're saying there. And also it'll be good too to confuse your enemies because your enemy's like, oh, they both have the same boons, how do I tell now? Yeah, yeah, okay, all yeah. right. With the traits on, uh, do you want to give the example of what your, your elite specialization's elite is going to be? What's the mirror mages, mm. the mirror mancers, whatever's like the ultimate lead skill? Okay, so uh, based on convention, basically uh, when you get an elite skill, it's a type of skill, and it's going to be uh, the same type for all of the other stuff you get. So when, I, when when we say what elite skill we're getting, we're also defining what type of skill all the utilities and stuff are going to be, right? Uh, yes, we are. Yeah. So like my one's gonna be a deception. So you have a category. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Oh, I forgot about deception. I would have loved to be deception. Oh, Damn. it's too late. It's, it's too, late. too late. It's yeah, too late. Yeah, I think we scored some points there, lads. You that's might good. have. Instead, I went with trap. Trap. Oh, okay. Oh, so you're going traps. Ooh. Yeah. Are you scared though after the dragon hunter? Um, a little bit, but at the same QQ? time, my elite tra trap is pretty dang interesting. Okay. So the elite skill trap is Hall of Mirrors. Oh, I like it. That's cool. Yeah. Oh, that would be a good trait name as well, like a good grandmaster trait maybe. Yeah. So if, just think about the uh, the amazing animation you could get with it. You could have like just a bunch of mirrors pop up, and all you see yeah, is yeah, like in a circle. Oh, yeah. dudes. Mwah, I like it. Exactly. That's good. And so when activated, uh, hold on. I want to have to be able to draw that. I'll draw it after I read. Uh, when activated, for the trap's duration, so I'm going to guess maybe 2-3 seconds, while standing in the Hall of Mirrors, all damage enemies would do to you or your allies in is instead redirected back to them. Oh, okay. That's funny, because that's almost a little bit like what I was going, going with, right? Like Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I'm all about reflection. Oh, yeah, you're about uh, empathy? Empathy! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so like, that's as, people do, as people do, as people attack, they you know they feel bad about it, take loads of damage. Basically, is the idea. Okay, well, interesting. But yeah, okay. So, so what? This is like a while they're in the traps radius, or it puts a thing on them that then they have. Yeah. So while they're in the radius and for the duration of the trap, uh, they have this debuff that whenever they deal damage to somebody else, they take damage instead. Uh, I haven't. Dis it'll have to be balanced between PVE and PVP, whether or not they take full damage of what you do. And because like if you're fighting a raid boss, for example, and you, you pop that trap, you're going to do a lot of damage to the raid boss every time it attacks to your friends. Um, the question is, do, do, like, is it going to work on those like insta kill attacks? I doubt it. Yeah, it would take a lot of fan dangling. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. A lot of fiddling around. That's a cool. I like that, though. I like that a lot. OK, well, so my elite. Um, what was my elite? Let me have a look. <laughs> Empathy. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. So my elite, my elite, okay, again, because I'm, I'm basically just on the Guild Wars 1 hype train here, okay? So there was another really cool combo back in that game that I used to love, 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 love. One of my favorite things about Mesmerin, okay? Especially within a PvP context, all right? It was a skill called Diversion, all right? So this is a debuff that exists in the first game where I cast Diversion on you, 
And if you use a skill in the next six seconds, you can cast that skill just fine and everything's good, but that skill gets disabled for like a really long period of time. Okay. So, so if your build is reliant on spamming one key ability, and I managed to divert that one special ability, you know, I've locked you out for like a long mm. period of time. Kind of like, kind of like blackout. Or... Yes, yeah, a bit like yeah. Blackout. Black Blackout was run into melee and knock both of your entire skill bars out. But this is like disabling a single key skill. And what's really cool about it, again, is think about how that combos with Wastrel's Worry, which is, okay, I've got both Diversion and Wastrel's Worry on me, and I'm trying to uh, complete some kind of an objective. What's the best play to make at the moment, right? Like, and it will just make your head explode unless you're like really thought about it. And like, it puts so much pressure on people, and that's what's fun, right? Like, that's that's what mesmer is to me, putting pressure on people. And so, like, mm -hmm. I've kind of built a kind of condi spec. I, I had the idea of like a trait that might mean, you know, how guardians have retail stop scaling with uh, power and instead scales with condi damage. Yeah. I was thinking this class could have a trait that makes um, confusion and torment scale with power instead of condition damage. Oh boy. So so that you can like you don't have to run this as a condi gear setup you could run it as a power gear setup and the other really cool thing about that as well is that opens up really weird gear sets where you're looking for power and expertise together but no condi damage so it like yeah. opens up areas of gear for the game that people don't care about right now I, I, which that's could have been interesting, interesting. that's kind of yeah because i i could tell that this diversion wastrels worry etc pairs very well with domination trade line yeah, so Domination already in game right now has Power Block, yeah. which is kind of similar um, and even worked for a while and still does depending on PvE mobs and stuff. So yeah, I like the idea of that being the Elite. Diversion and like it's some just epic friggin' version of that but for Guild Wars 2. And if you take the name of the skill really literally, which is something Guild Wars 1 could never do, if it's supposed to be a diversion, like you've diverted someone and they don't know that they forget to use the skill or whatever, you could do some really funny stuff with the visual effects on that. Like, you know how elementals can become tornadoes and sometimes like a cow will spawn and <laughs> yeah. fall, fall over? You could have some kind of similar thing going on with diversion where like a random diversion runs on the field or something is like the visual effect and like rarely a, it will a be like a runs cow. Across or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. You could play with that like visually. I think that would be a really fun, fun elite, really interesting stuff. Yeah, okay. So yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that's interesting. It would be interesting to have a Grandmaster trait, perhaps, that uh, turns con confusion into a power based instead of a uh, yeah instead of a torment yeah, based. Because yeah. that way you could choose whether or not to pair up this trait line with illusions if you want to which do is condi focus version, yeah exactly or if you exactly. want to pair it up with. Um, uh, with uh, whatever power, the power block right, one. yeah, and so you get to play with those synergies, and that's another big part of elite specializations, like having it hook as best as you can into the existing class mm -hmm. in fun ways. Yeah. So yeah, anyway, but th that 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 was my idea for my elite. Well, what's the then? Uh, we got one more thing to talk about, right? Just one. Uh, yeah. The t and then the, like a, a final closing thoughts. A rune set. So, so yeah, this is kind of a weird thing to think about, right? Like, what rune would the the elite spec have which i think could be really interesting mine's very simple and i like that i've gone with a lot but do you want to give yours first or no no you go ahead all right so my so my rune the, the, the big thing about the runes the t6 bonus or whatever it would literally just be what i like about buildcraft is finding lots of different opportunities to build towards the same ambition mm -hmm. so like playing a cool minion monster is like oh i can get a minion here and i can get a minion here and i can get a minion here i like that so I would want the Empath to have opportunities like that for people as well. So very simple, the Empath rune, rune of the Empath, the tier 6. What it does is it increases the active damage on Torment and Confusion that oh little boy. bit further. Oh boy. <laughs> so you can compound it together. And again, it, you, you find the numbers. You're, obviously people are going to run it together. But then that also opens up interesting opportunities for other classes that are maybe quite Torment or Condition Damage, uh, Confusion focused. And they might even be able to run it. Or you could have Core Mesmers maybe looking at runes like that. Like, that's the other fun thing about the runes, thinking about how everyone else can use them too. Yeah. So yeah, just like fun build craft, I think that is. Just lots of little areas to build the same synergy up and up and up. And okay. there you go. Okay, well, I went with something a little less OP. Um, how but... is that OP? You don't know what the numbers are. You don't know if it's OP. You're, you're putting on so much confusion and torment. You don't know. Things. What if that's only like 5% and then you, you get changed, You changed all of the shatters to just confusion and torment. So... Okay. Um, all right. So I went with... Okay, so traps are the elite... Uh, are, are the uh, utility skills and elite skills, right? Okay. For my thing. So you're going to augment traps in some way? No, because we already have two things that augment traps. You don't need another one. And oh, what? No! Yeah. But... 
Okay, I'm, te- right. I'm telling you, you already have two things that ob- augment traps. You don't need another one. Traps are... Uh, you have the, the, the runes of the trapper, which actually, if you use a mirror mage with traps is very good for them because they yeah. would go invisible, they'd have all that opportunity to do Does that. Does the doppelganger get the rune bonuses? The doppelganger would get the rune bonuses, yes. That's really cool. Yeah. Um, now, uh, you also have the DH runes, which give you might and stuff, share that with your doppelganger, etc. Uh, but, so we're not going trash with the tier 6 runes. Instead, we're doing something that'll benefit this class, but also benefit, it's, it's more flavor for this class, but it'll also benefit some other classes that desperately need it. Uh, or it could save a certain trade from another thing that you mentioned before. In this thing, the tier 6 rune would increase retaliation damage. Dude, I love these cards we've got here. I love like how cluttered they are right now. By so 50%. Amazing. By 50%? Yeah. It, re- it increases the retaliation damage you apply by 15%. Okay. All by right. 50%, yeah. Is that, uh, well, th- is that going to make World vs. World is really upset? Yes. Because can't we also share retail out on our Chaos Storms and stuff? And Signets of Inspiration? Yes, yes. And then that's always stronger as well? Yes. Oh, dude. Dude, you might you might have just lost the... See, I've been smart. I've not actually given the numbers. So you don't know okay. whether my stuff's OP. Bye. But this bit. is just lost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Ret- Increase retaliation like- damage. Okay, so because... Mirror ma- mage, it's all about mirrors. You're going to be putting retaliation on yourself during with this tra- uh, with this thing. You're going to give it to your buddies too, uh, your normal illusions as well as your uh, your doppelganger, and it'll increase the tra- retaliation damage for you. But more importantly, this might make a guardian retaliation condition build a little bit better. Oh, uh, okay. So you like that idea as well. I was about yeah. to ask you, would it be too obscene on guardians, right? Like it would be good on guardians, and I think yeah. it's the only thing that would make. It, it would, like, make possibly that Guardian build decent. This is something I kind of like as well. In terms of runes, if you took a Dragon Hunter, and th- uh, if this was all in the game, Dragon Hunters and Mesmers would be sharing, like, a lot of different rune sets. So that's kind of cool. I like it. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, hopefully so we got, we, got, we got cards down now. The cards yeah. are filled in. These are our elite specializations. The I mean, Mirror I'm not Mage. too worried about that. T6 50 uh, percent thing because I don't think you actually have any world versus world people watching. Oh, uh, okay. They're, they're all, all right. gone. Fair right? enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah. And nobody except world versus world does care about retail. Exactly. So maybe you're in the clear. So there you go, guys. The mirror mage versus the empath. Any final comments you want to make, boots? Um, I think I think when you think about this elite spec, you have to think about how interesting it could be. It's uh, how 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 much fun you could have with a doppelganger of yourself roaming around. Okay, all yeah. right. And uh, fighting for the corner of the empath, I just want to say if any of you have ever seen online people waxing poetic about the GW1 Mesmer and why it was all so good and blah, 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 and you've never really understood it or cared about it, or if you are a GW1 player, then you obviously know the empath is the way to go. So hold on a second. Are you catering to your audience right now? Is that what this whole maybe, maybe, all about? maybe? We will see. Yeah, give us your votes, guys. Give us your suggestions on what you. We will be picking from the comments one of your ideas for what we do with our next little head-to-head. So, um, so drop your ideas down there, and we will pull from those. You'll be in the next video with your comment uh, if we end up choosing yours. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Let us know who won, and we'll see you next time. Let the showdown begin.